Hello, friends of the internet, butterfly lovers, nature lovers, plant lovers, gardeners of any level. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm a dork. <laughs> um, my name's Emily. I am Fluttering Foliage on Instagram and this channel is all about connecting plants, pollinators, and people. And uh, if you're new here, that's what it's about. Uh, today is a video that I have been wanting to make for a long time and have worked on a lot. And I'm unfortunately not completely off book, so you'll see me looking at my laptop at my notes because I want to get it right. <laughs> That's why I've been putting it off so long. And basically, so, so basically today, um, I wanted to go over basically what to expect when raising butterflies and also some supplies you might find handy. Um, if you're new here and if you don't know this already, I live in Southern Wisconsin and I, have raised a couple species of butterflies. I mostly raise um, black eastern black swallowtails and monarch butterflies, especially monarch butterflies considering I focus on the monarchs especially because um, if you don't know they are at risk of being put on the endangered species list in December. Um, this has been a thing that's been going on for a while. Their population has declined for a while. Um, I have a couple of videos about that. I'll link them below so you can reference them in case you want to kind of catch up with where we're at in this series. But yeah, basically, um, I am here on YouTube because of the monarch butterflies and I want to get their message out. And with that deadline coming up, I think it's very, very, very important that we all get to, you know, it's, it's hustle time, essentially. Um, Hustle time. What is that? <laughs> I clearly need more tea. I am tired and uh, yeah, I totally have a butterfly thermos. So I got some caffeine, got some notes. We're going to get through this. So what are some things that you need to know first? Um, basically, you've heard me say this constantly on this channel if you're not new here, and that is planting milkweed and other host plants is the number one way to help the monarch butterfly and other species. Um, all pollinators are kind of like in trouble right now. It hasn't been easy on the, it hasn't been easy on the bees. Um, the bees are having a hard time. The butterflies are having a hard time. Species like the monarch butterfly are especially having a hard time. So um, definitely look at previous videos in this series to kind of catch up if you're, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but um, for any butterfly species and pollinator species, it usually has, the population decline usually has to do with loss of habitat. There's other factors, of course, but that's a big one. And that's why, you know, with this Butterfly Diary series, we're doing a lot of videos covering we being me. <laughs> Um, covering um, planting different host plants, especially milkweed. So milkweed, if you didn't know, is the number one. Milkweed, if you weren't aware, is the host plant of the monarch butterfly. It's the only food plant the caterpillars will eat. So planting that is very important. Um, so basically, regardless if you decide to raise or not, planting milkweed is the most helpful thing. Do you need to raise the butterflies? No, but um, there are benefits to it. Um, you can just plant the milkweed and be good if you're kind of, you know, queasy about bugs or whatever, but um, you'll find that lots of butterflies are enjoying your garden. It's fun to watch. So at the very least you can do that. So if you, if that's as far as you're gonna go, you know, you can just um, reference other videos in this series. Um, definitely check out Mr. Lund's channel. Um, I reference him a lot on this channel because he has been one of the helpful, res the most helpful resources for me when it's come to butterfly raising. But anyways, if you are curious or very interested in raising butterflies, stick with me. We're going to keep going here. So yeah, you don't need to raise them, but if you're interested, um, so yeah, you don't need to raise them, but if you're interested, um, you might be interested to know that in the wild right now, monarchs have a three to eight percent chance of making it to butter from egg to butterfly in the wild and in proper conditions being raised in 
captivity. I, I use that term loosely because I try to keep them, I try to be as hands off and um, keep it as close to nature as possible, but these chances increase to around 80%. Um, so if you're getting started for the first time, definitely I would recommend only start with one caterpillar. If you think you can take on more, do it, but um, you know, increase this slowly over time. If you're like, oh, I could probably do five, do one to three to start and then see how it goes from there. Um, it's kind of important that you try and gauge how many um, lives you can take on. You can scale back as needed if you feel like you're overwhelmed at any point in the season. Um, you know, and it's, I think a lot of us, especially me, like we wish we could save all the animals. Like I think we all wish we could adopt all the dogs and cats in the shelter. We wish you could save all the butterflies, but you know, you can't. But if you were trying to save all of them, it can actually do you more harm than good. There are a lot of questions that'll come up to help you kind of understand why this is important to know, and especially if you're considering how many lives you can take on. So can you provide enough food for your caterpillars? Um, that's really important. Like, do you have access to milkweed? Are you growing just a few plants? Or are you, are you do, do you have access to a giant field? Are you growing acres and acres of it? That's important. So like, so I'll get to this at some point, but caterpillars um, have five growth stages called instars. Um, and the biggest final instar, the fifth instar, they will eat and decimate milkweed really quickly. Well, any caterpillar with any plant. So you need to make sure you are able to feed these caterpillars at all time. And can you keep up with sanitation with the amount of these lives you can take on? It means providing adequate ventilation and that you're able to clean up daily and that you clean enclosures in between groups that you are raising. So um, those are just things to consider. Caterpillars poop a lot. You will at least have to shake out their poop out of a container once a day. You Between um, groups that you are raising, you'll have to like clean the cages out. It's not hard, um, especially if you are raising within your means. You are you absolutely, it absolutely is manageable. I'm not trying to scare you with any of these facts, but it's just things that you need to keep in mind. It's not as simple as just, oh, here's a jar, I'll stick a caterpillar in here and put some leaves in it. It's, sure, some have survived that way. We've all, you know, played with bugs as kids, but I like to try to teach in a way that is healthy and beneficial for the animal. Like, I try to be as hands off as possible. I try to, I try to just check on them, clean up, and just leave them alone. Um, I think, and that's what that's what it's like in nature. We shouldn't be thinking of them as our pets. Like they're fun to watch, but they are definitely not pets. They, they're not like a cat or dog. They're not going to love you. They're not going to be want to be around you. They're going to see you as a predator, hundred ten percent of the time. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, now here's where we get to a couple of little harder facts, and that is there are gonna be losses along the way. They Sometimes they die and you don't know why. It can happen at any stage in their life cycle. It, I've had eggs that I've never hatched. Caterpillars just kind of die whenever. Chrysalises that never had a butterfly emerge. I've had butterflies come out and not make it. It's just a thing that happens and I've had rough years and I've had years that are great and there's a lot of factors that go into it but some sometimes you're able to figure out why you're having a problem and other times you aren't because we don't have a entire catalog about butterfly diseases we have a few that we know of but it's I mean it's not like we have butterfly veterinarians that are figuring out new diseases and we just don't know it's nature is weird nature can be weird and sad it's just how it goes sometimes um and that being said, you might have to deal with some pretty gross stuff along the way. We will talk about diseases and other illnesses and things that can happen to them more in depth during the season, but some diseases are like NPV and OE. I don't know how to pronounce these, so I'm going to like list them here. <laughs> Those are two of the more common ones that you might come across. Um, they do simply fail to thrive and die for no reason. Um, other gross stuff includes 
that they just poop a lot. If you look at how, and this poop is actually called frass. Fun fact. The, <laughs> it's funny because the poop almost looks like way too big to come out of them. I don't know why I'm telling you that, but they poop a lot and that's just something to keep in mind. Parasites can also happen, although this can be easily prevented. I'll show you how to do this during the season, and as I go through the supply list, there's a couple things I can tell you about the supplies that I use that do help prevent certain par um, parasites and predators. The biggest, so it's important to remember that the biggest benefit of raising is the educational and awareness benefit. If you are raising and sharing your experiences with others, other people will want to care and watch out for these insects, even if it's just planting milkweed. You might save some lives along the way, that's for sure, but the number one benefit is educating others. Some people don't even know that they're in crisis. A lot of people don't even know about the migration or that they only eat milkweed. The more of us that care for this animal, the better of a chance they have. So I'm gonna get into a supply list now. Um, I have a few of them here that I can show you. Others I will put examples up on the screen. And you will also notice that in every single video in the series, I have a I, Amazon Idealist, which is basically a big supply list of things that I've selected that you for easy shopping if you wanna dive into this. So without further ado, we're gonna get into some supplies. I just need to get them out. Sorry, this hasn't been open for a while. It's a little funny. You see this? I have no idea what this looks like on the camera. But this is a pop-up mesh butterfly habitat. They come in a variety of sizes. This is my biggest one and the biggest one I've been able to find online. I have two others outside. Um, that are smaller and more cube shaped. I believe those are like 12 by 12 or 10 by 10. But these are great because they the mesh on these is so fine that it will keep tiny pests from coming in and trying to get the caterpillars and the butterflies and the chrysalis. There are certain species of wasp and fly that will try to parasitize or, you know, harm and eat the caterpillars and butterflies and this mesh is so fine that they will not be able to get in. Um, so I think that's really important and uh, oftentimes you'll see if you're raising in an enclosure like this when the caterpillar goes up to pupate and makes its chrysalis it'll hang off the top of the enclosure. So when the butterfly emerges it is able to you know hang to dry and then it also if it begins flying, it's not gonna hurt itself with these soft walls. It can also like fall and climb back up. So I really like these for that reason. They also have the, the uh, sorry. <laughs> they also have this side, which is a like, it's supposed to be like a display window, but I actually use it as the floor because it helps for easy cleanup. I usually lay the bottom of the floor with paper towels, which is on this list. And I am able to go in there every day and pick up the paper towel. And if I need to spray down and wipe this down, it's easy. In between groups, I am also able to throw these in the bathtub with a 19 to one water bleach solution and sanitize them. We will get to that. We will even bleach food. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> That's a thing. Um, but it's easy to clean, easy to work with. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt the butterflies or the caterpillars. So I really like it. You can raise them at any stage. And the fact that it's mess, <laughs> the fact that it's mesh allows for ventilation. So this is absolutely the number one supply that I would recommend getting. And they come in black or white. Um, I prefer black because then you don't have stains from like poop. Oh, what's the next one? So I save deli and takeout containers because I actually like hatching eggs and have young instars in these. Um, it helps me keep better track of them because they, I mean, they're close to microscopic when they emerge, when they're eggs and when they're small caterpillars. So I can just lay some paper towel in here, have some milkweed for them and watch what they're doing. And when they become bigger, I can put them into the mesh habitat. 
it is very, very hard to keep track of tiny, tiny eggs and caterpillars in those mesh habitats. So I like to save these for that reason. It's very important to also not overcrowd in any container. So like something this size, I'll probably have like three to five tiny caterpillars in it. And then when they're bigger, I can maybe have like five to 10 in the bigger enclosure, depending. If you find that if you're if you're wondering about if you're overcrowding or not, keep an eye on how much poop is at the bottom of the cage. So this is another cage option. These are critter keepers. I don't like these for the entire growth cycle, but I do like them for, um, you know, you might have to quarantine a caterpillar that you're worried about it might be sick. So you put it by itself away from the others. Maybe you have too many in your big enclosure and you want to, you know, have like a intermediate, have like a middle stage cage. These are great for that. Biggest thing about these and other hard surfaced enclosures is that I do not recommend these for butterflies because if they come out while their wings are still wet and they try to fly around, they will absolutely damage their wings. So that's not good. I would not let them make a, a chrysalis in here, but they're great for quarantine uh, as we're in quarantine right now as I'm recording this. Sorry for that jokes, I'm tired. But these are great for that. They're easy to clean. They're just a good other option. I think these were like seven, five to seven bucks on Amazon. Of course, if you're a plant person, you have garden shears. I use this to cut milkweed. Um, definitely clean them in between uses and get the sticky stuff off. Be very, very careful around milkweed sap because it is toxic. If you get it in your eyes, that could be bad. So be very, very careful. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is a floral tube and I will put milkweed cuttings in these for the caterpillars to keep their milkweed fresh. I don't just dump leaves in there. Um, I like to have a water source to the milkweed to make it last as long as possible. So if I'll even take like a to-go cup from Starbucks or something, fill it with water and put um, many stems of milkweed <laughs> into the cup and that way like the caterpillars don't fall in and drown but it gives adequate water for the milkweed cuttings that you have. I also find using that those to-go cups you don't have to change the water as often. Usually with these you have to change it once a day so I like to use these for like a cup a stem with a couple leaves for eggs and early instar caterpillars. It's very important when you're waiting for an egg to hatch that you have fresh milkweed available to them right away. You can't just put a leaf in a container, let it dry out and expect it to eat it. They want fresh food. They don't want dried crap. <laughs> but I do find that with these, you do have to fill them more often. With the bigger to-go cups, you should change the water every so often. We'll get more into that, but for the sake of going through your supply list, this is something that's nice. You can even get test tube holders to hold these up. I don't, but it's something you can do. You will need all the paper towel <laughs> and make sure it's not the paper towel with soap in it because that could kill the caterpillars. So I just like to get the basic, most basic, even store, just store brand stuff. It works just fine. I use it for lining cages and cleanup. So definitely an important supply. Bleach. <laughs> You will need to make a lot of bleach and water solutions for sanitation. The bleach solution that I recommend using and will show you on this channel is very diluted. I even dip their food in it because. I use a 19 to one bleach solution for every stage. It's just very gentle and you rinse a bunch of times when you're cleaning. So I just like to keep, I don't like to use anything, you know, bottled from the store. The chemicals could be very, very harmful. The bleach solution is very gentle, especially if you're dipping food in it, which we will do. I know that sounds weird, but I will explain when we get to that point. But yeah, keep some bleach around. Keep very basic bleach around. I mean, I'm talking like Sure Shine or Store Brand, nothing special done to it. Just the most basic grandma's bleach that you can find. Um, tweezers. Um, these are all the reptile ones, but... I, you know, it helps for moving things around and keeping things clean. I like it for that reason. Um, 
I also recommend getting rubber gloves. Um, it'll help keep sticky milkweed off your hands. Um, if you have to handle a caterpillar, it'll protect them. I try not to handle caterpillars, but um, the fact is, is that caterpillars breathe through their skin. So like, let's say you went and pet your dog or cat that has a flea tick preventative in its fur, you don't wash your hands and you go handle the caterpillar, that caterpillar could get poisoned from that. Um, so I really try to be, that's why I really try to be as hands off as possible, but also as sanitary as possible if I do have to handle them. And that goes with like handling their food. If you pet your dog and touch the milkweed, there's flea tick preventative on the milkweed and they eat it, they could get poisoned. Um, there's so many things in your home that can affect them. So you might see me not work with gloves sometimes, but trust me, it's better to be safe than sorry. If you're just starting out and you're nervous about that, it's just good to have in your toolbox for this. Another thing that you should get that I actually don't have, I don't know why, is a butterfly net. Um, if you need to, for any reason, if you're raising your in your house and one happens to get out and you need to catch it, you have a butterfly net. Done. So those are a few of the basic tools um, that I think are cool to get started with. You could certainly just start with this one habitat and kind of, you know, just get some paper towel. It's not expensive to raise um, butterflies. I think this was even like 15 bucks. It's very inexpensive. Um, so if you are interested, definitely check out the list below. You can always comment if you have any questions about this stuff. Um, so now you might be wondering when you can get started. This depends on your region. Um, right now it is mid to late April in Wisconsin and the butterflies are still flying north. They have not been spotted here. But last year I found my first monarch egg on Memorial Day. So um, I like to use this time to grow their milkweed, which I'm gonna grow their milkweed and plant this hopefully by the end of May so I have some ready for them in my garden. And then um, I can expect, you know, I can expect to start raising them around that time. So we've got a couple months here yet, but, you know, in the southern states, they're already by you. Um, I think they're even as high as Tennessee and Kentucky at this. They're not high. They're at this point they're They are as north as Kentucky and Tennessee. The last I checked, but they'll be here soon. I think people start seeing the monarchs here in April, but they're probably not breeding yet until they're, you know, they're like, okay, we're here. <laughs> Keep your eyes open in your area for their arrival. Follow journeynorth.org. If you are interested in the monarch and other butterfly species, definitely do your research. Check all the resources I list below. And uh, so if you are interested in raising monarch butterflies, definitely continue to follow along with this series. Check out all the resources I've listed below. If you are interested in other species, definitely check, keep following this channel as I will try to do more as long as I do YouTube. The Eastern Black Swallowtails are a lot of fun. They're very different and the same in some ways. So um, definitely follow along and look up what species are in your area that you might be interested in. Do your research, um, leave nature better than you found it. And uh, I hope that if you're interested in this, that you we can do this together. So, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in other series on this channel with plants and other pollinators hit the little bell hit subscribe and leave a comment and uh you know all those things that youtubers tell you to do at the end of a video it helps us it helps you we're here to help each other so we're also here to help the butterflies so thank you so much for watching i know i said that like three times i am tired so uh yeah i will see you guys next time this is editing Emily, and I just forgot to mention during my video that while I might describe the butterfly process and it sounds daunting, at times it is absolutely such a rewarding hobby and citizen science project to take on. You will not, I've never, as difficult as it has been sometimes, I have never regretted raising butterflies. It is so completely fulfilling and a magical experience and that alone makes it worth it so if you are if you're on the fence about this 
if that is any kind of like consideration that you would like to take, um, I say go for it. Um, you will not regret it, I promise. So yeah, thanks for watching this video and thank you for listening.